Joining us now in studio to discuss their points of view, Lucas Takaza, the NWC Sanko member, also Andile Ntikama. He's the national convener of the Black First Land First, been particularly outspoken on this. Andile, I'll start with you because you have across various media platforms. Um, you look smug. I mean, this is something that you've been fighting for personally for a long time. Uh, do you feel that the time is now and that uh, you're happy that this bill has been passed? The president must not sign this bill into, okay. into law. Why do you say that? Uh, both the opposition parties and the committee that has been handling this bill has been misled, and specifically by one, uh, the deputy minister, uh, Jeremy Cronin, who has been running that process. If you look at the intentions of the uh, bill, it says it will do away with willing buyer, willing sale, and so on. But in fact, there's nothing of this sort. In the existing law and in our constitution, you can always expropriate, always. And you must always pay just and equitable compensation. And that is the catch. We have argued that when it comes to land, land is stolen property. Land must be expropriated with no compensation. This matter has not been resolved. The bill have not asked the first fundamental question, who owns this land? And why did we end up with a situation in South Africa where 35,000 families, white families, own 80% of the land? This bill, if the president signs it into, into law, it, is put, it puts us exactly where we have been in the past 20 years. It just simply means we must buy. Mm. And this is the problem. Mm. Are you saying this land must just be given back without any compensation, as the EFF is saying? Well, in fact, EFF is saying something slightly different these days. <laughs> they, say <that> we, <laughs> they say that they only want unused land. So white people can okay. keep all the productive land, they just want the unused land. And mm -hmm. that is where I suppose we can't pay compensation. BLF, Black First Land First says, every single inch of land in this country is stolen property. Mm -hmm. And all of it must be returned to the people <coughs> without paying a cent. Now this bill does not ask the question, who does this land belong to? Why it was taken from the people? And why must you pay compensation? You are correct in the description to say, it is compulsory sales. But compulsory sale is going to come back to this issue. How do you um, calculate the value of the land? And then you're going to come back to market value. Then we're back to willing buyer, willing seller, mm. market value. And we say it is unjust, it's unacceptable, it's politically unworkable, it is economically also uh, onerous. But for us as black people, it is basically saying we must buy back a property just stolen from us. It's a, we will not accept that. That's why we will push for land occupations. Mm. Okay. We're going to come back to this conversation. Let's go to uh, the phone lines. Uh, we've got Agri Manyanja, Secretary General for the African Farmers Association of South Africa, joining us now on the phone line. Uh, good morning to you and thank you for joining us here on Ground Report. Uh, your views whether, whether uh, President Jacob Zuma should go ahead uh, and sign this bill. What is your stance? Well, the issue of uh, 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 land appropriation bill it's not something new in the Republic of South Africa. I mean, uh, there has been uh, appropriation of land before, and uh, we fully support that, that President Zuma must sign this bill uh, and make it a law. Uh, maybe it will fast track the issue of land reform in South Africa, because some of the issues that have been always mentioning is that uh, why land reform has been so slow is because those who are implementing it, they are stifled by the issues of the constitution and so on. So we, from Afasa's point of view, we support uh, that the president must sign the bill. Mm. I'm going to come to you. If you can just hang on uh, with us, uh, Gray, and just uh, be in on the conversation with us. Lucas, I mean, uh, talking, uh, uh, do you agree with what Andile has to say? I mean, uh, is this something, uh, practically, it's very difficult to implement. Uh, and, and, and that's my concern with it. Um, uh, how do you see this actually playing itself out practically on the ground? Thank you very much, Peter. Um, look, I, I must upfront say that as Sanko, we were party to the negotiations at NETLEC um, in terms of the consultation processes. And I can assure um, the South African community that the bill is watertight. Even your concerns are addressed in the bill. And we are for the bill to be signed as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. In fact, if it happens um, according to our um, will, it, it might be signed this weekend by, this, uh, by the president, uh, because the president is right here. Mm -hmm. 
And Dile, let's expand on, on your concerns and why you are of the view that President Jacob Zuma should not sign that bill. We've got uh, different opinions here this no, morning. But, but Sanko, <laughs> Sanko was in the negotiations, so they already sold the land. They, they were responsible for the willing buyer, willing seller process. Hmm. But again, they have been misled by Jeremy Cronin because everybody, including your caller, they believe that finally we are resolving the willing buyer, willing seller problem. The president must not sign because this is not true. If it were true, this bill would have said, first, all the land which is in private hands now belongs to the people. That, that is the first thing that we have done. Mm -hmm. And it will remove the requirement of compensation. None of us here, including the president, would know what is the measure, what is the criteria to measure just an equitable compensation as per Section 25 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, I can tell you now already, there's law, case law. It is going to come back to the market value. Mm -hmm. And so we're back square, back to willing buyer, willing seller. The president is going to be misled if he signs this thing into law. He's not going to resolve the, the, the land question. But also, we had suggested, we were in parliament, by the way, we suggested to the committee that you must also have, um, you know, targets. There is no targets in South Africa about when we're going to get what land. Mm. As we speak, it's going to take another 100 years for 10% that we see is, is, is going to be returned. So we said, the bill should have said, in 10 years, 50% of the land must already be in the hands of the people and in, in this time. But we don't have this provision. So our view is that it's, it's a lost opportunity and an unfortunate that the, the committee that drafted this bill is, is, has been afraid once more mm -hmm. to confront white land owners. Because, I mean, are there targets? I mean, it's an important point. I mean, uh, has, has, does the bill set out that in a certain amount of time, a certain percentage of land must be expropriated? Look, we, <coughs> the, 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 the bill once signed into law, um, remember that it empowers then uh, the minister in charge uh, to deal with the issues of regulations in which then um, those regulations um, we would, we would look into them that even the regulations actually then set those targets in terms of acquiring the land that he is uh, rightfully saying that uh, uh, does not belong to the majority of the people. Mm. But, but can I just ask mm. the question, what is new about this bill? Mm. Let's ask that question. What is new? The Expropriation Act has been there. The how train where it's run right now today, mm -hmm. if you had a house where the how train is, your house would have been expropriated mm -hmm. and you'd be paid compensation. Mm -hmm. That has been law, it has been there in the law. The constitution allows for it. So this bill now, we want us, what is new? Nothing is new, this is the problem. Mm -hmm. So yes, is there, is there something new? I mean, uh, it makes a point. Yes, there is something new. Is that in the willing buyer, willing seller program or policy, whatever you call it, mm -hmm. Um, the, the compensation was not necessarily in terms um, of government uh, by the Valuer General. It was in terms of the owner of the land. And, but now this bill says it must, the compensation must be equitable and just, and the Valuer General decides. And it, it can be appropriated without the consent of the landowner. And I think that is, that is what is different. But the other, all other avenues required the consent of the owner. This bill does not require the consent of the That's owner. That's not true. That's not true. In fact, this bill says you must still go to court. And I can tell you, let me tell well, you now. Well, you can still go to court. Yes. I, mean, I mean, it's true. I mean, so, I've read no, no. the act and it says here that if no. you want my land and you're not going to give me enough money for it, I can go to court. Yes, you go to court after. You don't go to court before. I'm saying it's an avenue that is because we, we, we still want justice to prevail. And therefore we are saying that if you are grieved in terms of what has been given to you, mm. therefore you can then run to our courts and our courts then would do justice um, to you. Because we don't want, we are not necessarily saying that the land must just be they are expropriated willy-nilly. We are saying that we understand the history, we understand the conditions that we live in in South Africa, and therefore we have actually looked into all those nitty-gritties. You see, you see this, act should, this bill should have amended Section 25 of the Constitution, and it hasn't done so. So, so what is he talking about? It's, it's not applicable in our law. You can't expropriate, and then when it is done, you go, go to court. 
it's going to be struck off if you to try to do that. It will be simply struck off on the basis of Section 25 of the Constitution. This is what we said before the committee. Amend Section 25 because that is where the protection of a property is lo located and that is where the sellout of 94 happened when these guys gave our land to white people so that they can go to parliament, right? <laughs> so so we, we have not moved away from the sellout and I, I want to appeal to the president of this country. Do not sign the bill. Ask the question. Hmm. Where is the money going to come from? Why must we pay compensation? Why must we still go to court? Why is this land not declared property of the people? These are the questions that the president must ask, mm -hmm. and you will not find answers in this bill. Mm -hmm. Let's cut away from this debate uh, for a short while and go back to our uh, phone line. Uh, Gray is still on the line with us, the Secretary General for the African Farmers Association of South Africa. Gray, we're going to come back to you. Let's chat on concerns regarding uh, production and also uh, investment in South Africa and how this will, will uh, affect that going forward. Your concerns? Well, in terms of production, obviously, the, the production will improve. It won't deteriorate because there will be much more comfort, both from the side of the farmers, because currently most of the farmers are scared. They don't understand what is actually going on in terms of land reform in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I agree with the gentleman who was this the the office if the office of the value general is acknowledged and recognized by the state that office is there to find an uh, equitable and just price we must understand one of the reasons of coming up with this uh, bill of land expropriation is to is to ensure that the sellers of the land are not escalating prices with it. And uh, so it will be able to assist the buyers to buy the land at an equitable price so that everybody must be able to access land. I don't see any reason why people could be scared that it's because it's not taking land without compensating the owners, but the owners will be considered at an equitable and, uh, and just price which is recognized by the government through the office of the Villa General. Well, uh, great. Thank you very much uh, for your time this morning. We do apologize that line is not 100% uh, uh, clear. Gray, uh, the Secretary General for the African Farmers Association of South Africa, joining us on the phone line. Uh, Lucas and Andile, any uh, reaction to those comments? In terms of production, productivity, do you know right now in South Africa we are uh, net produ I mean exporters, importers rather, of maize? And then the chicken from America, which is a cancer chicken, is going to kill us. And the maize <laughs> coming from America is also GMO. So, so the, 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 the argument of South African agricultural sector as productive is a lie. It contributes about 2% today to the GDP, the agricultural sector. So a massive redistribution of agricultural land and bringing on new farmers supported like anywhere on earth will actually raise productivity. Even an economic argument says that we must move in very seriously into the, econo into the agricultural sector, redistribute and produce differently. There is no food security. Maize and chicken, as we speak, comes from America. So they must not, that, that is an argument not available to them. However, the fiction of just an equitable compensation, this man does not know the value and how to calculate it, the caller does not know, the president does not know, the, the committee does not know. What we know is that the constitutional court was confronted with a case by a farmer who lost land in Zimbabwe, and they went to our constitutional court, and they said that, please give us compensation, and ultimately it came down to paying a market value. So we know what the court is going to say. Your value general is not going to be able to solve your problem because the constitutional court and the courts are going to rely on section 25 of the constitution. We have to go there. We have to go back to the sellout that you signed onto to say no, land belongs to black people, land was stolen, land must move from the market, land must, from, must move from the courts. And that's the only way we can return the land of black people. That is, we must not be afraid that that's weak. Let us, let us say the truth as it is, and let us get our land back. Mm. Lucas, your response. Look, look um, we, we are very clear um, uh, that you have got the minority of the people of South Africa producing for the majority. And we want the converse to be true, so that the majority of South Africans should be able to produce and accommodate the minority in that production. 
And therefore, for us, um, it makes economic sense. Um, and um, whatever the, 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 the term that is using that we are now importing is on the basis that we've got this minority that must do everything in their power to make sure that they produce for this majority. And therefore, we want to change that system to make sure that the majority produces so that there is sustainability of our production of agriculture and they use as much as possible the agricultural land that is available to us. And I know that there's huge land in South Africa. We don't have the problem of land. We have the problem of producing. And that's what we want to deal uh, with in terms of this uh, extra bill. Let's move on to one of the other concerns of, of the one of the opposition parties. Uh, I'm just going to quote you, assets that could be expropriated uh, uh, not being clearly defined. That is one of the concerns of the Democratic Alliance. Uh, uh, what is your views with regards to that, Andile? The, the, the <laughs> DA naturally is going to be terrified by mm. any talk of expropriation because it represents those who stole our properties, including land. No, there is no desire from anyone to take uh, uh, homes of white people and so on, except, of course, my organization says in the cities, if you have 10 rooms and you're only two of you, we either tax the rest of the rooms you don't use to subsidize the building of houses on people in Alexander, right? Or if you don't want, you can subdivide. But, but in this bill, there is, no, there is no target on the houses. Mm -hmm. Let South Africans be clear. Either, as the law stands now, if your house stands where, there could be a government uh, building for a train, for an airport, whatever. Your house can be expropriated. This is provided in the law, and you will be compensated. Right? So people must not now feel like, oh, there's a new dispensation in terms of the law. No. This law, that's why we argue there's nothing new in terms of this law. And that is our problem with this law, that the president is going to waste his time reading through this bill and having to sign a thing which does not change the regime of property exchange and does not address the land question. And this gentleman who wants agricultural land, this bill is not going to give you the thing that you think it's going to give you. You've been duped by uh, uh, Jeremy Cronin. This is the problem that we have. The president must not sign this thing. Mm. Uh, practically, though, uh, let's take an example. You use an example of, of someone who owns a property. Uh, uh, how do you determine, uh, you know, it's been stolen from you, as you say. How do you determine who, who gets that land? And, uh, and what land it is? Are you saying all land? Absolutely all land. But I mean, uh, practically, Europeans that's impractical. Here. You know how, how what Europeans did when they arrived here, 1652? They were sometimes into horses and they would just ride and put a, a, a signal there, this is all my land now. So the land appropriation by white settlers was totally irrational and illogical. Are you it, saying now that irrationally and illogically you do the same thing? It is not illogical, it's justice. They stole our property. We're saying all of it is declared <coughs> property stolen. If you want land and I want land, it's a simple process we suggest. All of us will queue, we'll go to a government uh, a, a department, a committee, and we'll all apply, like you apply for a grant, and what do you want to use this land for, and you'll have your land. But it cannot be this case where 35,000 white people own 8% of the land, and they have it, and they, it's stolen property. So it's not complicated at all. Declare the land, stolen property, belongs to the people. Who wants land? You want, you want, we will give you land, and you'll say what you want to use it for. Mm. It's, it's as simple as that. Mm. Lucas, listening, listening to, to the, the conversation and the debate that's been happening here this morning, do you still stand by uh, the fact that President Jacob Zuma should uh, assign that bill? Is there any, any change of mind or any opinions that have, that have changed after this conversation, after look, this debate? Look, we are very clear, Sanko. Mm. We are very clear, and I'm saying that we, we participated, we made sure at net, that the netlet processes are followed to the latter. Mm. And, we, and I know that, um, uh, for instance, um, business, Agri, uh, South Agri SA and them that were representing business there, they were very much opposed to many issues. But we managed to uh, speak to them and speak sense to them that this appropriation bill is not a monster. But it is a, is, is a program that we want to embark on to make sure that uh, the land comes back to where it belongs to in a proper manner. And I think I'm, uh, but see, I'm there, convinced there that we've done the There are obviously concerns, though, Lucas, that, uh, that we go the same way as Zimbabwe. I mean, everyone's got that on their list. And Dile mentioned it uh, himself. I mean, you can see the, the Zimbabwean economy is, is in dire situations. And many people think that the way that Robert Mugabe did his land expropriation, uh, that we'll go the same way. Can you quell those fears? Look, the bill has got nothing like what we are saying now. The bill is very clear. 
it's appropriation without consent, which is different from what was before that you had to consent, uh, the, you know, the consent of the, of, the, of the landowner. The bill is clear now is that we, expro we expropriate the, the land without the consent of the owner. We just give an equitable um, uh, price to, to, to the landowner. And there is nothing like Zimbabwe that is coming. And we are saying that in the bill itself, it's clear that these people that are getting the land will, will be supported. It's, it's, not, it's unlike that you will be thrown in there and you ought, the government is going to have means to make sure that those people are supported. And at the end, we want the majority of South Africans to have productive land where they can produce for themselves and for the nation. Andile, you look like you, no, you no, have something to say. No, 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 I mean, uh, it is 22 years, even the 8% the, the of the land that has been given to our people, the people have not been supported. So you are very optimistic, but I understand you are part of the ruling, ruling party, I suppose, <laughs> and you're very <laughs> lenient to these uh, liberal uh, propositions. No, uh, the, the Zimbabwean situation, of course, has been used as, the, as a tag to frighten us. We have to be resolute about dealing with this land question. And in the long run, in fact, it's going to be good for, for everyone. But it can not depend on the feelings of those who stole our land, what should happen. In fact, this idea that it is now expropriation without the consent of the, of the, of the owners is not true because the owner will take you to court and in the court, we know what the court will decide and it will decide that you must pay a, a market value, which is to us an insult because land was, I mean, let's go back to this narrative in South Africa, all the land is stolen property, and he agrees. Do, would you buy back something which was stolen from you? No, you wouldn't. No, none of us would do that. So why are we doing this with land? Mm -hmm. And the president has to be appealed to. Don't sign this, send it back to the committee and say to this committee, you have not done your work. We want an end to this policy of willing buyer, willing seller. Mm. Lucas, quickly, I mean, uh, leaving that aside, the courts, you, you raise an important issue with the courts because no, I, they are going to be an inundated amount of people. I mean, obviously, I mean, logically, if, if I'm in a piece of land and someone comes and says, this is my land, we'll pay you for it, but we'll pay you less than market value, I'm going to go to court. You're going to be inundated with courts' uh, uh, appeals against these things. That's the reality. Yeah, I, I think, Peter, let's, let's alleviate the fears. And um, I, I, know, I, I know that he might have uh, insight into the courts. I don't have that insight into the courts, and I believe that our courts are just. They do the right thing. Now, already he knows that the courts are going to... I, I can't know. I, I cannot speak on behalf of the courts. But I know that our courts are very... Uh, the judicial system in South Africa is very fair. Um, it, it, it is just. And I don't have any doubt of that. I, I think, I'm not, unlike him, that he already knows that the courts... Um, but, but listen, you're not answering the question. Yeah. Every single white person is going to object and they're mm -hmm. going to ultimately go to court. You're mm -hmm. going to sit with the court system. Mm -hmm. Already the land claims court is inundated with just the restitution cases. Mm -hmm. Now, you're saying, okay, all these people are going to take this land. They're going to go to court. So firstly, it means that if you hope to get expropriation through this act, you must wait for a process which is going to go to court. And of course, ultimately to the, to the constitutional court. It can take between three, mm. three two to three years. I mean, many years, of course. Mm. Now, so everybody's going to be waiting for the court uh, to decide this matter. But I'm saying to you already, I know how the court's going to decide because the court is set a precedence. In law, there's something called precedence. <laughs> a higher court makes a decision. Everybody must follow that decision. If you look at how the three matters that has arrived before the constitutional court, including the Zimbabwe decision, we know that it's going to come back to the market. Venue. Guys, that's where we're out of time. We're just uh, before yeah. one midday. Andile, it's always good chatting to you and your views. <laughs> I guess Andile Mkitama, uh, the national convener, Black First Land First, uh, Lucas Gakaza uh, from Sanko. It's a debate that's probably going to go on for years and years to come. But uh, will the president sign it? Looking likely. Uh, that expropriation bill has now been passed in Parliament. All it needs is number one's signature on it, and uh, it will uh, become law in South Africa. It's a debate that will continue to rage on. Very interesting conversation indeed. But with that said, unfortunately, we have run out of time here on Ground Report. We're going to have to leave it at that. For myself, Abigail Fasaki, my colleague Peter Van Onselen, and the rest of the Ground Report team, have yourself an amazing weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Take care.